Hello, Vatera fans and RC scale enthusiasts. My name is Toby Lewis with Horizon Hobby, and we're going to be talking about the Vatera Ascender today, ready to run. Um, we've got the ready to run Ascender in two great versions the long wheelbase uh, Chevy K5 Blazer, as well as the uh, 72 Bronco. And uh, being that the Ascender is one of the most capable ready to run scale four wheel drives out of the box, we want to show just some small little uh, details that you can really focus on and pay attention to to set up your vehicle before you hit the trail with your friends. Um, there's some very, very simple stuff that we can do to make this already capable vehicle uh, even better, such as uh, lowering the, the uh, chassis ride height, lowering the body a little bit, and then installing uh, some very simple uh, upgrade accessories available from Vatera. So we've got two basically out of the box uh, ready to run ascenders right here and uh, we've got the brand new one right here with no modifications and it may not look like much but this one has the the lower ride height and the trim fenders and you can kind of see it's got that that little bit lower stance and it doesn't have to be much um, you'd be surprised on the, on a vehicle of this size uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to get that center of gravity down and uh, make it a, a definitely more capable vehicle. Remember, when we're talking ride height, we don't need a hugely lifted monster truck to have clearance. Both of these vehicles have the same size wheel and tire, which means the, uh, the differential is the same height off the ground. So lowering our chassis is still um, gonna give us the same amount of overall rock clearance, um, but we're, and we, we don't limit travel either. We still have the same amount of travel. We just have some of that travel as down travel instead of, inst or uh, up travel instead of all down. So let's get started by uh, moving this one out of the way. And we're gonna show a few things that we can do on this brand new ready to run K5 to uh, set it up for uh, the best crawling we can, we can do out there. So first off, we're gonna adjust the suspension. We've already tried this on a couple ready to run, so we kind of know where we need to be. Uh, the front on these is a little bit higher than the rear, so they start at right around uh, 15 millimeters, and that's from right at the top of the shock to the top of the, uh, nut, the adjustment nut for the shock. So first thing we're gonna do is roll that down to right around 10 millimeters. And I kind of have an idea where 10 millimeters are, so we're gonna start by bringing that down and then we'll check it with our caliper. Uh, you can also use a small measuring tape if you have one or, or, or a small ruler, uh, metric or standard, either way. Just if you have a standard, just convert it to millimeters. But we want it right around 10 millimeters. It's 15 millimeter stock. So we're gonna go ahead and put our caliper on there and measure the distance between the adjuster nut and the top of the shock or the top of the threads on the shock. We're a little bit, we need to go up a little bit, so a couple more turns, go back up. And we're right around 10 millimeters. So we've got the front adjusted. Now um, we're gonna go to the back. The back comes stock at around 13 and a half millimeters, right from the top of the threads, again, to the adjuster nut. And we're gonna lower that down to uh, right around seven millimeters. So a little bit more, let's go dial that up and drop that suspension down. It's about the most simple modification that you can do. It doesn't really require any tools except for something to measure it. And you can actually eyeball this if you need to get it close. So right at about seven millimeters there. And right around the same there. So we're good to go. So basically just a, f a few turns of the adjuster nut on the shocks, we've lowered the suspension and we've actually increased the sag of the, uh, of the chassis so we still have that total same amount of up and down travel. We've just lowered the center of gravity and we haven't affected our clearance. We still have the pumpkin on the differential right here which has the same amount of clearance. So next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna lower the body for a couple reasons. One, personally I like the, uh, the way the body being lowered looks a little bit. It makes the bumpers fit a little bit tighter to the body. And again, it gives us uh, just a little more lower center of gravity as well. So first thing we got to do, we got our body here. We've already, again, we've already kind of done this on some of our test vehicles. So we're going to check 
we're go going to go ahead and move the body post. It takes a uh, two millimeter hex driver and we're going to remove the pins. We'll start with the rear and on the rears we uh, drop these down two holes. So we're going to take the pins out. We'll show you what we're doing here. The body on this comes a little bit higher in the rear than the front to begin with, just like a full scale truck would do. It, it sits a little bit higher in the, in the, uh, in the rear. So we're going to drop the rear two holes and we're going to drop the front one hole and it's going to level the body out a little bit more. So once we pull the pins out, we simply slide the mounts down one hole. until we locate where that pin goes in the next hole. I'm sorry, two holes on the back. So two holes, pop the pin back in and thread that bad boy back in just like that. And then we'll do the same thing on the front. The set screws on the front ones are right on the outside. So pull that two millimeter hex screw out and drop the fronts down only one position. So we drop it down, find the next, the next guide hole. Do it on the other side. One hole, simple. All right, again, quick and easy adjustment. Now you're going to take your body and you're going to pop it on there and you're going to notice that the body doesn't go all the way down on the, uh, on the, uh, body, on the uh, body post because it's hitting the bumper. No big deal. This is where it gets a little more complicated, but still not bad. Still something you can do with a, uh, a Sharpie and a couple pairs of scissors. We got our body scissors. So first thing we're gonna do is just take a uh, Sharpie and put a little mark right where the uh, bumper mount meets the body, here and here. And then on the back as well, The body is now hitting the bumper mount, so we're going to put a mark there on the center and there. Take our body off, so we've got our marks and we can do this a couple ways. We can take the, the curved scissors and just make a nice little curved cut. like that. Or if you like square better, you can use your straight scissors and make a square notch. I prefer to make it as small as possible. Nice and neat. And uh, once we do that, line our body post back up. This is giving us a little bit of a hard time. There we go. And bam, now we've got clearance for the bumper. And uh, in my opinion, the bumper fits a little bit better, a little closer to the body, a little higher, a little more stock look. Uh, we do the same thing in the front. Uh, we'll do that here in a few minutes. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and talk about the fenders. Actually, we'll go ahead and cut the fronts out because we're gonna need to see what kind of clearance issues we have. So we're gonna make two notches in the front as well. Take your time and make these neat and you won't even really see them once the body's on the chassis. And there we go. Now you can see the body fits perfect to the bumper and the body sits all the way down on our body mounts. So now we've got our lowered ride height, we've got our lowered body height 
our K5 is looking really, looking really, really sharp and maybe ready for the trails. But next thing we got to do, we lowered everything. We've got to make sure that those tires are going to uh, clear the fenders. So when we're going up the trail and that suspension's articulating, we don't want those tires grabbing on the fenders, just like on a, a full scale rig. So you might have the, uh, you might want to uh, push your suspension down and see if it clears. But remember, your suspension is not gonna articulate this way when you're out on the trail. So you actually have to pick it up and rotate one side up at a time. Because once you go up those rocks, this is the way your suspension is going to move. So now we notice we're actually we're actually having some clearance issues on the back. It's actually pushing the body up in the rear as well as the front. So what that's going to do when you have momentum and that tire is moving, as soon as it hits that body, it's going to it's going to either it could in this case break your body uh, or even just slow the wheel down and lose that momentum as you're going up that hill. If it was a full-scale vehicle that was made out of out of solid sheet metal, obviously it would it would stall all your pro, uh, forward progression, and you wouldn't make it up the incline. So for, next thing we're going to do is we're going to trim the fenders out. So we're going to start. This is where it's important just to trim uh, a little bit at a time, taking even amounts off, so that you don't take too much off because you can always take off more, but you can't add any any back on. You'll end up having to get a new, another body. So. Uh, we're going to start by uh, look, trimming just a little, a little out of the back. We've got this little lip right here and uh, on the fender flare. So we're just going to actually remove that first. And then we're also going to flare these corners just a little bit to get rid of those sharp edges where the tire can grab. So this is, again, simple. Put our straight scissors aside. And we're going to use our curved scissors for this. And we'll go ahead and cut that lip off carefully right at that line where the fender flare drops straight down so you kind of have a guideline to start with sometimes it's easier to turn the scissors around and switch directions take your time in doing this and make it nice and neat because again you can always take more off if you want to use masking tape to actually mark your line, right now I'm cutting against that, that transition in the body line so it's fairly easy to, to uh, follow. But again, you could tape your own line if you wanted to do that. So that gives us a starting point. And we'll go ahead and pop that on there. And we actually have quite a bit more clearance. We're actually clearing just with that little bit. It wasn't even that much, and it really doesn't affect the look of the rear fenders that much. We're actually clearing the top of the tire. And since the rear wheel doesn't turn, that's all we're really concerned with is the uh, is uh, clearing it straight. But we are hitting the front here, so we're going to take our scissors and we're going to round that a little bit. Just take a little bit off and boom, that's all it took was that little bit. This back is kind of a sharp edge, so we might go ahead and take a little bit off there too. Remember, we, we're, we're making a trail rig here. We're not in a, in a car show, so we want it to look nice, but we would do the same thing on our full scale rig. If we had clearance issues with the body, we would trim or add fender flares um, to get the tire clearance. So as you can see, now we have the tire clearance that we need. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the front. Um, just in the f for the sake of time, I've gone ahead and uh, completed a, uh, another body. So we're going to show uh, the completely cut out body on the chassis. All right, folks, now we've got our body completely cut out. We've got it notched out for the bumpers. And uh, as you can see, we've cut out the fenders. I've mo taken most of that outer lip off in the rear, so we still have a nice little fender flare. And on the, on the front, we, have a we had a little bit more clearance issues, so we completely took the uh, fender flare off. I personally think it looks good with no front, f no front flares, but there's a lot of aftermarket fender flares available out there. If you want to put some bigger fender flares on it, that's a, that's a great look as well. Um, but for rock climbing, this is going to do the job for us. So let's go ahead and test fit this on the lower chassis. And as you can see, it fits good. Now we've got all that clearance 
Remember, we want to check with the wheels turned both directions because on the fronts, unlike the rear, where they just articulate up into the fender, we have uh, we can get real close to the fender as we're turning full lock. So as you can see this one, it's hitting the bump stop before it hits the fender. Turn the other direction, again, hitting the bump stop before, before it hits the fender. And then with the wheel straight, right up inside the fender, no problem. So we've got rear clearance, we've got front clearance, and we've got a new lower center of gravity chassis and body for crawling up the rocks. Now that we've checked all of our tire clearances and lowered our chassis and our body, we're ready to go out and hit the trails. Uh, we're going to have a, a great low center of gravity crawler that's going to be able to tackle almost any obstacle. Uh, thanks for watching this video and have fun with your ready to run ascender. Keep, uh, keep an eye out for the next video in this series. Uh, we're going to be talking about adding front end weight to our ascender that's going to give us a little bit more traction on steep inclines. And uh, we make some really cool uh, front end weights that bolt onto your, uh, your spindles in the front and look just like brake uh, rotors with calipers. So we're going to show how to install those, how to install the aluminum spindles uh, that, uh, that give you a mounting point for those new weights, and also show how you can add a little scale detail by painting those up. Thanks for watching and have fun on the trail.